All right, everyone, we're going to do something a little bit different today. I got two of Iowa's punt returners, Imani Hooker and Kyle Gronowig, with me. Modern Woodman Park here in Davenport once again turned into a ballpark oasis because of the mighty Mississippi. Now, one of the unsung heroes of this Iowa team is senior point guard Tanaya Davis. And by the time the game ended, it looked like that Big Ten West title is now quite the long shot. It's been even more fun for the defensive line early this season because of the emergence of A.J. Epinesa. 29-year-old making it look easy through the first two rounds as he threatens to run away from the field and win his fourth major title. Isaiah Moss, one of five Hawkeye players in double figures. He had a couple clutch buckets in that second half to help push the game into overtime. But in the end, not enough for the black and gold and a storied career of one of those Hawkeyes comes to a close. Yeah, Jay, it's quiet now, but obviously it was rocking earlier tonight. The Hawkeyes getting that signature win they were looking for in the Big Ten Conference season. 74-59 over the fifth-ranked Wolverines. Actually, the most points allowed by Michigan in a Big Ten game this season. That 21-2 run you talked about just really blowing the game open as the Hawkeyes took control in that first half. For the most part, everything works. We're not sure about the fuel gauge. They call it the rat trap. People just like it. They just think it's hilarious that a bunch of big college guys get out of this thing. A 1977 camper that some Hawkeyes have turned into the ultimate road tripping vehicle. Sort of. The steering wheel is upside down for some reason. Not, nothing right here works at all. No AC, no tunes right now. Jake Newberg spearheaded the RV purchase after seeing it on Craigslist last summer. 500 bucks later, the guys had a fixer upper. There's a shower there, kitchen, like a bed back here, and like a table right here. And um, we just had to tear it all out because it had roof damage and everything was all moldy. Furniture, bedding, and other essentials were added for comfort before the guys hit the road for the first time. <laughs> Sam Brink says the best excursion to date is a five-hour trip to Drew Ott's wedding in Okaboji. It was just a long trip, so by the time we got there, we were just ready to enjoy the weekend and Seeing Drew get married was fun. Got a lot of compliments on the camper when we drove that to the church. It hasn't been all fun and games for the guys and the rat trap since getting the rig. There's been a fender bender with no injuries and also a broken fuel line that almost derailed the trip to Dubuque. Had to run to Iowa City to get a new fuel line. We put that in, then we finally got it running, and we're like, well, we got it running now, so we might as well head up to Dubuque, and we rolled into Dubuque about 10 o'clock. A moment that turned into a five-star memory in accommodations that are anything but luxurious. You know, we've absolutely got our money's worth, like the fun we've had is, has paid for that. And also, you know, all the work we've done, it's probably only appreciated the value if you look around. The guys aren't exactly sure what they're going to do with this thing when they all graduate. But I'll tell you what, after today's tour, I might have my eye on this thing for the right price. Reporting from Iowa City, Adam Rosso for Hawkeye Headquarters. It's time to bring football into the 21st century. So we knew we had a real opportunity and that no one was doing it quite yet. An idea to innovate practice equipment on the football field has turned into a robot that's part quarterback, part punter. As soon as it drops back. It's no waste reps. It puts the ball there the first time and every time. Its name is The Seeker, the brainchild of a few alumni from the University of Iowa and their company Monarch Sport. This is the first time athletes have ever been able to train alone. Um, they've never been able to go out by themselves, be tracked, and execute a plethora of drills. The Seeker uses positioning technology from sideline sensors and a remote tracker to deliver balls to an athlete. It can also operate like your standard jugs machine, but with upgrades for accuracy. You actually be shown a virtual grid of the football field. You tap where you put the machine, and then you tap where you want the ball to go, and the machine makes the necessary adjustments. Second tap starts it. You might expect a product like the Seeker to be developed in Silicon Valley versus Iowa City, but the Hawkeyes football program and Ben Hansen have been instrumental in turning this thing from a concept into a product in just three short years. An email came across uh, to myself, and it was a student at Iowa. So the funny thing is, now kind of looking back at it, um, I almost deleted it. But because of the Iowa connection, Hansen agreed to let the students use the football facility for testing. Literally would be on the field out here with this tiny little prototype. They'd fire it off, mark something down. And yard by yard, the seeker was developed. 
what's nice about the technology is they can instantly do it um, and it's easy changes and corrections and they're able to kind of take that feedback and uh, create results with this. With the testing nearly complete, football practice around the country might soon look a lot different. All because of the ingenuity from a group of native Hawkeyes. I'm not surprised just because of what the state of Iowa produces in terms of people and their innovativeness. And it's just neat though that these guys took the idea um, and took it to the next level. Being from Dubuque, Iowa, born and raised, like most of our team, we're fully Midwest is the best <laughs> uh, deep down. And so it means a lot having the support from these local teams and uh, hometown school. This bad boy right here is the eighth and final prototype that the guys have developed over the past three years. The ninth version is the one that Monarch plans to go to market with sometime here later in 2019. Reporting from Iowa City, Adam Rosso for Hawkeye Headquarters. I think it's a great experience to kind of be out here now that he's old enough to see what dad does. For a little over five hours on Thursday afternoon, J.J. Henry and his 14-year-old son Connor had some out of the ordinary father-son time. Well, when he told me I was catting this week, it was like 6.45 in the morning, but I was pretty excited. Connor was on the bag for the first time in a PGA Tour event at the JDC after caddying for his dad in a few pro-ams this season. It was kind of the same. I mean, he was telling me how it would be a lot different, but it didn't really feel that much different. But for dad, it was a day that was years in the making. I was hoping one day that my son was old enough and more interested in golf to be able to come out and be inside the ropes and hang with dad. JJ Henry actually got into golf by caddying for his dad at amateur events when he was in high school. His dad returned the favor when he was trying to make the tour. He caddied for me actually in Q school in 98 when I first got my tour card. So he caddied for me in a couple tour events right when I turned pro. And so to have things almost come full circle, basically, you know, gosh, what, 21 years later. Who knows, well, maybe someday he'll be doing it. I'll get a chance to caddy for him. Wouldn't that be something? Passing the family's connection to golf to another generation. But for now, the Henry's focus is on making the cut after a two under par opening round. It's a great experience and hopefully we'll continue to do well and play this weekend together and, and have a good time. Lasting memory for sure. And one that could cost dad a little bit of dough when the week is done. You guys make the cut and, you know, maybe get in contention. How much are you going to ask for dad for the allowance? I don't know. <laughs> He's hoping we, we get there so I can buy him a car in a year. <laughs> <laughs> that was the deal. Connor says the toughest thing about Thursday's experience were the hills and the length of the course. He'll be back hauling dad's clubs tomorrow when JJ tees off at 7.50 in the morning. Reporting from TPC Deer Run, I'm Adam Rosso.